All right, welcome everyone, welcome to it. Uh, so now we're doing the Police uh, Discography Ranked, the studio albums. Um, thankfully there's only five, so it's not like uh, a massive undertaking uh, like some of the ones have been. Um, so yeah, The Police, um, Andy Summers, Stuart Copeland, and Sting, uh, one of the best trios of all time. Um, and, uh, of course, they were only together for about nine years. They were formed in 77, their debut came out in 78, and, uh, yeah, they broke up in 86, I believe, uh, right at the height of, you know, superstardom. Their, their fifth album was actually their biggest, so they kind of went out on a high note when it comes to popularity. But how do these, uh, albums actually rank in context with each other? So, um... Obviously, this is just my personal opinion, and it comes from a place of love. I love all five of them, obviously, uh, for different reasons and that. And, um, yeah. So, we'll get right into it. And, uh, this one will be number five. Um, obviously, Zenyatta Mondata. Um, obviously, I'm gonna mispronounce a lot of their album titles. Uh, so, yeah, this one obviously has, um... Don't Stand So Close To Me, the original version, which I think trumps the 86 version that they re-recorded so much. Like, that that version to me is just boring adult contemporary. I don't really like that one very much. Not that there's even anything wrong with uh, adult contempo, but, uh, yeah, this the version opening this is way better, in my opinion. Um, kind of, uh, well, then you go into one of my favorite three-track runs, uh, one of my favorite, I'll tell you the other one, uh, when we get to it, but, uh, what, my favorite three-track run in the police discography, Driven to Tears, When the World is Running Down, You Make the Best of What's Still Around, and Canary in a Coal Mine, which a lot of people don't like that one, or they find it annoying, or whatever. Um, I think that one's so fun, and so catchy, and the lyrics are very apt to, uh, we all know people like that, you know? When the atmosphere is um, less than perfect, their sensibilities are shaken by the slightest defect, and um, you get so dizzy walking in a straight line. Uh, Voices Inside My Head, which is almost an instrumental, and the vocals are pushed way down, bombs away. Um, really, the only reason why this is number five instead of higher is um, di do 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 di da da da, which I know. Um, Sting is unhappy with people that don't like the song and critics of the song because he thinks they're missing the point that it's about the banality of um, of lyrics and words and all that. Um, but I don't care. This is coming from someone that likes Obla Do Obla Da from uh, the Beatles and I just find this song annoying and uh, I don't like the chorus or anything. So um, it's my least favorite recorded police song. So, um, that's the only reason why this one is so low. Uh, even stuff like Behind My Camel is really cool and, you know, really shows why Andy Summers is, um, he's an underrated guitarist, but he's, he's, he's still acclaimed in his own way, and, you know, he's worked with Fripp, so, you know, if you've worked with Fripp, you're obviously probably one of the best musicians on earth. So, this is the only one I don't have on CD, actually. The only police record I don't have on CD. So I should get it, because it's a very easy um, collection to complete. Number four, the debut record, Outlandos de Amor. Of course, uh, this one already has stacks of hits off it. Um, Next to You is a, a good opener, but it, the record gets even better after that, in my opinion. So Lonely, definitely one of my top, probably 15 police songs. Roxanne, as overplayed as it was, still... It still stands the test of time. It's pretty great, and really um, introduced the world to Sting's very unique voice, <laughs> um, as well as his great bass playing. Uh, Hole in My Life is pretty good. Um, Peanuts, uh, catchy, definitely punkier than where they'd go. This is definitely their punkiest record. Um, great chorus, and then Peanuts, that whole thing. Uh, yeah, love it. Um, Can't Stand Losing You, definitely one of my favorite police songs of all time, my favorite off this record. It's hard to beat So Lonely, but it does. Um, you know, it's kind of sad, because he's, like, suicidal over this, uh, girl in this breakup or whatever, 
but there's also lots of funny lyrics to the song. It kind of straddles the line quite nicely. It's not too serious or anything. Truth Hits Everybody, that one's good. Uh, Born in the 50s, that's always where they kind of lose me. I don't... That one, it's not bad at all, but I don't relate to the track, obviously, but I don't have to relate to a song to like it. I just... It's not my favorite one. Uh, Be My Girl, Sally's kind of funny, because I'm pretty sure it's like an ode to a blow-up doll or something like that. And, uh... Masako Tenga, which, um, they always have such great instrumentals. Like, that's probably my fourth favorite off the record. So, yeah. They're, they're such established musicians, and, um, yeah. Even the artwork is very punky. You know, kind of reminds me of The Clash. Like, that 77 era. This came out in 78, obviously. But yeah, number four. Woo! Okay, and that's the only one I don't own on vinyl, so I have a hole on, in each collection. Um, Synchronicity, number three, the massive record, you know, tens of millions of copies worldwide, and they broke up when this after this came out, or just after. Um, obviously has the huge hit, Every Breath You Take, arguably their biggest song ever, and a very misunderstood song because a lot of people play it at their weddings, and it's more of a creepy, kind of stalkerish song about really longing for someone and maybe taking it a little too far. Uh, King of Pain is a huge hit, Wrapped Around Your Finger. Unfortunately, on the vinyl, they left off um, Murder by Numbers, and it was put on future releases and the CD version, which I do have, and uh, which is a very interesting kind of dark-humored uh, song. You know, Sting was pretty good at that kind of stuff. And the fact that they didn't put that on the original pressings and they put on Mother is kind of weird to me. But Mother isn't as quite as bad as people say it is. And um, definitely people that are into more experimental music and that. It's an interesting song. It's kind of creepy and... Um, yeah, it works. It's kind of like she she smothers him too much, she won't leave him alone. It's like a weird, kind of obsessive thing. Um, it is my least favorite off the record, but I'm not one of those people that skips it. Um, I love Miss Gradenko, which I believe is uh, Stuart Copeland's song, but Sting sings it, of course. Uh, Walking in Your Footsteps has some cool tribal drumming. Almost sounds Paul Simon-ish. Um, something that he was doing in the 80s, even before Graceland to some extent. Um, Synchronicity 1, one of my favorite police songs ever, and Synchronicity 2 could probably go up against Can't Stand Losing You and maybe a couple tracks off the upcoming ones as being one of my favorite, if not favorite, police songs. Yeah. Oh My God's Good. And uh, I didn't even realize this till today, but they released a whole... Schwack is the word I was looking for. Like, whole different, um, covers, and... Yeah, it's like, collect them all. I was... I, it was good that I was playing The Police recently for this video, because... I wouldn't have realized that the artworks are all different. Um, obviously they just shifted where the band members are and where the colors go and everything. Um, I also found out my second copy is, is not good, but this one... I got used. It plays pristinely. Um... I think I bought both copies for two bucks, that's why I couldn't resist. Two separate trips to the store, obviously, but that one is just, it doesn't play really at all, and this one played really well. So yeah, I, I love syn Synchronicity. It's overplayed, the singles, like four of the songs, but they still hold up in the right context, of course. And this one I own three times, because I bought it for a dollar at a record shop in Vancouver, I got one for free from a free bin with Wings, Band on the Run, and um, some other record I can't even remember right now. Some really obscure record by some band that never really made it. Um, maybe for good reason. <laughs> um, and then I got one of my friend's, his stepdad's old copies. So I have this three times. Um, so I obviously can weed a couple out of the collection, but... Uh, yeah, Message in a Bottle, uh, definitely one of their most overplayed songs pre-synchronicity. But when you sit down and listen to it, like, the drumming is incredible. You know, some people think the send in out and SOS part goes on a little too long. Uh, I disagree with that. 
Um, this one is, has a more reggae flair than any of their other records. Uh, Regatta de Blanc is a great instrumental. Um, Bring on the Night, great reggae. Walking on the Moon, everyone knows that one. That one's fantastic. Um, on Any Other Day is uh, funny and not very politically correct anymore. Um, because of the my teenage son has wound up gay part. And that one is, um, I believe Stuart and Sting are singing that one. Uh, the Bed's Too Big Without You is a, a really good one. That's a highlight. Does Anybody Stare? I love how it starts really slow with just the piano or whatever and, and just keeps kind of building and building in pace. Um, my only low light is um, No Time This Time. I, when I used to have the CD, I used to sometimes stop it before it got to that one, because it's, it's not really that bad, but it's just such a come down after all the other tracks, in my opinion. And a lot of people are going to disagree with that, but uh, yeah, it's a great record overall. And um, I think it was my favorite for quite a few years. It really holds up, though. It's really good. And then finally, Ghost in the Machine. And I wish I had a more or less battered copy, but uh, this one plays pretty good, and I have the CD, of course. Um, this one, I always forget, like, how it ranks in the discography of The Police. I always, um, think it's their third record, but Zenyatta is their third, and then this. This one's just really daring, and Zenyatta Mandata kind of sounds like the, um, kind of the merge into the more commercial synchronicity era and that, but the fact that they drop this daringly, like it's way darker, you know, there's not as many, there are hooks obviously, but it's not pop songwriting as much, uh, it's way more darker, uh, foreboding, um, obviously every little thing she does is magic is on here though, and that's one of the, the best pop songs that they ever wrote, and it's just one of the best pop songs, like I could just stop the sentence there. Invisible Sun almost sounds like it's done by another band, like it's so, like I said, foreboding. I think it's one of the best things they ever wrote. I remember when I was a teenager I discovered it because um, one of my all-time favorite bands, Hum, covered it, and uh, it, it was a really rough live cover, like you can never get a good quality of it, but I thought, wow, what's this? you know, an unreleased uh, track by them, and then I found out it was The Police, and that's probably the gateway into being a fan of The Police. Uh, Spirits in the Material World, of course, uh, introduces us to a very much more synthy, less reggae police, and I think they kind of lost some people with this one because of that. People were kind of like, where's the reggae? Where's the punk? Where's the, the police we know and love? Like, it's such a 180 from the last few records leading up to it, and uh, hats off to them for d doing such a daring thing at that point in their career. And um, yeah, this this one, I, I don't think any track is bad off this one. Like, I know some people that don't like Demolition Man, or um, Rehumanize Yourself even, I, I think those ones are great. I think this is the best version of Demolition Man. Sting would re-record it many times in the 90s and the 2010s, and um, I never really liked the re-recordings. Like, one was on, like, some soundtrack, and then he did it recently because he re-did all his songs. Or not all his songs, but he, he did a record where it was just him redoing some of his songs. Um, yeah, uh, the, the three highlights are probably those first three tracks, though. That's the, the, the next run of... Um, you know, three-track run that I was talking about. That one would tie the Zenyatta Mandata one, in my opinion. Um, and then you got Secret Journey. Like, I don't know, they're just very intelligent songs, well-written, well-researched. And, you know, it's sort of a concept album, of course. And uh, it took me years to realize that these were actually, like, portraits of the police. And... Um, I can never remember which one's Andy and which one's Stuart, but that from the hair looks like Sting. The hair. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, it's a really cool album. Very minimal, of course. And um, this one doesn't even have a sleeve, so now that I know this, I can go put a sleeve on it. So thanks so much. Um, 
there's no wrong answer when it comes to the police of what your favorite LP is and what your favorite track is and all that. So, um, yeah, uh, I've really been appreciating everyone's comments lately. Uh, it's awesome to be at home or at work and see comments come in on, on videos, even old videos. Um, like a video that's a month or two old, I'm still getting like a comment a day on, which is awesome. So I really, really appreciate that. And um, yeah, let's talk police. And uh, yeah, I'll be back really soon with another video. I had a little kind of speed bump there this last week or two. But uh, yeah, I got uh, some more stuff on the back burner. And uh, yeah, it's just really exciting times. So anyway, uh, thanks so much, everyone. Really appreciate it. Peace out.